Hey, Scott Houck here, and in today's video, we're going to be covering facing the thing you fear. If you're watching this video, I am very sure that you desire a better thing and outcome in life. You desire more income. You desire living out your potential. You desire having better relationships, overall better quality health, living happier, more peacefully, fulfilling who you were born to be, finding your calling and fulfilling that calling, leaving a legacy for yourself and your family, ultimately just being able to buy whatever you want when you want it, having time freedom to live your life the way you want to without having obligations and things you need to do. No matter what desire, if you liked any of those I just mentioned or all of them, this video is going to help and I want you to watch it all the way to the end because at the very end, I'm going to give you eight golden nuggets, eight golden exercises you can do to actually apply all the information we're going to cover here today. So on these slides, I'm going to start going through a couple of different things that are going to be really important for you to incorporate in your life and having your fears not driving your life into the ground. We'll start with this Earl Nightingale quote, most people tiptoe their way through life, hoping they make it safely to death. How amazing is this quote to feel into, but also at the same time, how terrible. Imagine the human population, we're about 8 billion people in the world. You, me, many other people. Almost all people, 95% plus, are trying to keep it safe. Tiptoeing their way to an early grave, trying not to do too much in their life. They have so much anxiety, so much stress, so many worries, so many doubts, so many fears, literally driving their life into more pain and suffering. Earl Nigel is very on point here, where most people are just trying to make sure that they're not doing something too dangerous, or not doing something too risky, or not doing something too uncertain. Now, why should this be? Well, the first point is past pains, failures, and mishaps control us. Have you ever been through something that's been really hard? Have you ever been through something that's like, man, it was like a catastrophe that happened? Maybe your life was way up at one point. You had luxury, you had goodness, great income, you had a great career, whatever, and it all came crashing down. Have you ever been through something like that before? Or maybe you've been through a scenario that in childhood, it was like constant chaos and constant roller coaster, and it feels like everything you did was a failure or not good enough, and it feels like you just doubt yourself sometimes. You don't have that feeling of belief in yourself. Or if you ever had past failures where it's like no matter how many programs you do in personal development, no matter how many things you've invested into self-help wise, they never worked out very well. Or have you ever been through scenarios where you had a business and no matter what strategy you tried, whether it was paid ads or doing something in your business, it's like it never really seemed to quantum leap like it was promised. We've all been through these things before, it, like especially you and I that have been through many things before. It doesn't matter who you are, we've all been through hardships. And that's really important to remember. So what needs to happen for two things here is we need to learn the lessons. That's what there that, that mishap, that feeling of failure, anything that's occurred, what needs to happen is we need to learn the lessons but then healing needs to take place and we need to move our life forward. I've talked to many people and have had many clients who went through terrible, terrible things. There's two different groups. One of the groups, since this stuff happened so terrible, they were so scared to do something different that for the next 10, 15, 20 years of their life, they literally pushed themselves downward and didn't want to move life forward because they wanted to remain safe. And on the other side of the spectrum, the other group of people said, I know I've been through this really hard stuff, like traumatizing, terrible, but I'm going to learn the lesson and I'm not going to hold on to this for the rest of my life. I'm going to move out of this. So they go through the healing and move onward. Now, the other part of why this would be is you're stuck in a prison. I've been there many times myself and I have to be careful that I'm not stuck in a prison as well because it's trying to protect you from possible emotional danger. So when we're in a place where we're stuck mentally, stuck emotionally, it's like we have big dreams, we have huge potential, we really want better in life, but we still find reasons to not do something. 
it's because we're stuck in a mental prison. It's not even yours. But what it is, is the protection is fake. It's like, it'll con you out. It'll say like, I really want to go do that thing. But that side of you will tell you, it'll be a little voice. No, that's probably not the best thing to do. No, you can't afford it. No, you don't have enough time. You're too busy. No, it's not good to take risks. No, we need to do it after the holidays. No, we need to do it after the kids go to college. No, we need to, etc., etc. No, we need to after this big surgery. No, we need to after this big thing, right? It cons you out. So basically, what those people do when they keep listening to that is they find out later in life, they get to their deathbed, and it's like, wow, I made it here. I'm 85 years old. But I really didn't live up to my potential the last 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, like near zero of my potential because I was so scared the whole time, right? So they get to the deathbed and it's terrible news for them because they get there and it's like, I regret it. Why did I even try and stay safe this whole time just to get here and me dying off, right? It is playing safe that we create a world of utmost insecurity, Playing it safe and trying to make sure like I can figure out when to do something is actually the highest form of insecurity in a person. Why? Because they feel playing it safe and making sure everything is, you know, as safe as possible is actually a big form of insecurity within that voice that's talking to them is their insecurity. Their insecurity basically is a form of something from childhood or past experiences that shows them, I'm not going to make this work. I don't know if I can actually do anything like this, and I am not as great as I thought I was. So it's a form of insecurity in the actual physical body that's submerged and suppressed that actually is playing safe. So this is a quote. I don't know. It's an anonymous quote. I don't know the exact thought leader that said that very famous person I just couldn't find who it was. But the utmost secure insecurity is that form of who you are within when you're going through this. And fear is actually hidden suffering. So right now you're suffering more by not going through the fear. Most people never think of that. That 95% of the population is say stuck in their fears. They feel like if I play it safe, I'm not going to suffer, right? Because if I take the risk and it doesn't work out like it didn't work out 10 years ago or one year ago or five years ago, if I don't take the risk, everything is just fine. My world doesn't change. I don't have to go through that emotional up and down if it doesn't work out, right? But what actually happens is we're either growing or we're dying. That's the only state of the world. Think about the the nature around us, the plants, the trees, the greenery around us. It's either growing or it's dying. There's no staying the same. It's scientific fact. Animals are either growing or they're dying. The day we're born is also the day every day from there that we start dying. We grow or we die. So when you actually don't take the risk, and you actually don't do the thing that you know you need to do for yourself, you're actually dying more. Scientific fact. And the cost is on your health, you suffer more in your health. Every day that you're not living your calling, which is your highest frequency, you suffer more because you're at a lower frequency. And actually all of your health, everything that goes on in your body, is a direct reflection of what's going on inside the subconscious. So the more you delay your healing, the more you delay doing the thing you need to do, your health has consequences. Your income will have consequences because you could have been making a lot more money. Don't you believe that you could at least be making an extra thousand dollars a month? I think everyone should say yes to that, right? Sometimes when I say, shouldn't you be believing that you can make an extra hundred thousand a month? Many people say, yeah, I believe that, but do they really believe it, right? So no matter what income level (laughs) that you could be at, there's a cost to your income when you're not making more money. There's a cost to you spiritually because you are deadening yourself internally instead of growing to that next level that you could be. You're taking a cost mentally because you're in doubt, worry, and concern all day, every day. So that literally, scientific fact as well, the more doubts and worries you have, it's going to put suffering into the body. And it plays a cost on your family. If you have a partner, you have a spouse, you have kids, you have grandkids, whatever it is, okay? You're putting a cost on them. Every day that you don't accept your calling and you actually move your dreams out one week, one month, one year, you actually unintentionally and through osmosis push them down as well. 
that's just called ancestral wounds and ancestral things. The more that you don't do something and step up today, the more it plays a cost on your future generations, no matter what, if they're alive or not even alive yet. Okay. And the second line there, you suffer day to day with the same old BS of life situations. Say so again, you, you can choose to delay growth, but you're quite literally dying. You know, the same energy loops are going to keep playing out the same consequences, the same doubts, the same worries, the same suffering until you create the change that you want to see in this world. So what would you rather do? Go through one big uncomfortable moment, like taking the jump, making the big decision before you think you're ready, right? Doing those things, do it one time, heal through all those past pains and lessons that you need to learn, move on and live a great life. Or what most people do is have small uncomforts every day because they do have a worry, they have a concern, they have a doubt, they suffer, they're not living how they could be, they're tired all day, they're drained all day, they're not doing what they were called to do, and they struggle every day and they die more. What would you rather do? I mean, obviously, the first part is way better. Do it one time, one day, make the jump, and start working on yourself even deeper, right? Or taking that calculated risk. I'm not saying take a risk that's terrible, I'm not saying go bet all of your money in the stock market and see if it blows up. I'm talking about positive calculated risk. Something that says and shows, if I do this, it is pretty much a guarantee that I'm going to move life forward or I can move this thing forward, right? So I'm not saying just go out there and risk your life on something. I'm saying take a calculated positive risk one time, heal your past wounds, learn your lessons you need to learn, and move on. Stop being stuck in one energy loop of the same struggles over and over. This is really important. You know what you should be fearing? Dying without healing. Dying without living who you were born to be. Dying and reincarnating into the same themes over and over because they're not cleared and you will keep facing the same circumstances until you clear them. You'll keep doing this over and over until you get it. That's how this works. If you're not learning your spiritual lessons now, you're going to do it again and again in this life until you do. You're going to do it into the next lives, past lives, future lives kind of idea. And you're also going to actually, these seas of fear, you're going to leave in your family generations to come and before you. That's what you should be fearing. Not the fear, is this going to work out for me? Not the fear of, is this perfect timing for me because the holidays are approaching or I have to do that one thing that I know after I get this specific answer, then I'll make a decision. Or once I finally have my income level where I need it to be, then I'll, take, I'll, then I'll start investing, right? Those fears, those fears right there are nothing compared to what you see in front of you on this slide. The fear of actually dying with all this junk left inside of you is the worst. And this is what you should be thinking about a whole lot more than those other fears. What if you get to your deathbed and you're left without healing, reincarnating, doing the same thing over and over, and living a life that you were actually born to be, but you actually didn't? That's the worst. So... I want you to consider this and take a screenshot of this and maybe print it out and post it on your wall or office or whatever it has to be to remember this. What should you be fearing is this. That's the worst out of it all. Very important. Now, giving credit to my first mentor, Bob Proctor, he's passed down. He's passed on now, God bless him. But I want to give him credit to this because this diagram right here, I learned when I became a coach under Bob Proctor. He's my first mentor, and I was able to go from zero to being absolutely sky high in the coaching industry through his mentorship. One thing that he absolutely suggested that all of us coaches do at the time was go through the terror barrier. This diagram in front of you, again, credit goes to him and his company for developing these concepts. This is really important. On the bottom left-hand side is where you're at right now. You're in bondage. This little diagram on the bottom left, if you can see here, let me move my mouse. This part right here is your conscious mind. The bottom part's your subconscious mind. And this little circle down here is your body. And this is X type results. So what this means is you're in bondage right now. You're thinking X type thoughts, which means comfortable, 
familiar, logical, I'll wait to do something until I get the money, I'll wait to do something until I hear the good news, I'll wait to do whatever, I'll wait to do it, I don't want to put the strain on my spouse, oh man, if we go into debt to do this investment, I don't want to put the strain on my partner, I don't want to put the strain on my family, right? These are all X-type thoughts that are not serving you, but they're there. Seem logical, right? This is X-type feelings. So you feel about the same every day, don't you? About the same. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down, sure, but you feel about the same. You're living in an X-type vibration with X-type results. That's what the R stands for. Right now, you're in bondage. It's that mental prison I was talking about. The second level is reason. These little antennas here, your five senses, okay, all the different senses you have in your body to sense your environment. Now, what's with this reason stage is you start reasoning a why idea. So instead of thinking about, I'll wait to do that thing until the holidays, I'm going to wait to do that thing because of this thing, you start actually entertaining, well, what if I did it now? What if I did take that risk? That's actually a good risk. What if I took the step forward? What if I made the leap? These are why type thoughts, right? You're thinking about it. But you still have an X type vibration going on, feeling wise and in the body with the same results. Your results don't change just because you started to enter your dream state, your imaginative state. But I hope you're listening to these words right here. This is the most crucial step, stage three, conflict. You have the why idea here. You're entertaining the idea of taking the leap, doing the thing, the positive risk, whatever it takes to move to the next level because you had it with life. You had it being tired. You had it being broke. You had it being a roller coaster of an up and down life. You had it not having the partner that you want in your life. You had it having these same issues coming into life over and over. You had it. So now you're going to start to entertain it. You're saying, I don't know, what if I did this? You're going to start to get anxiety. So that Y type idea goes to the subconscious and starts to create an XY vibration. See at the bottom here? This state of XY vibration is what's called a foreign vibration. It's unfamiliar. It's what's called uncomfortable. This is what's going on. So in your body, you start to get very uncomfortable. You might get tense. You're starting to feel excited because of the possibility, but you're scared because of the risk. You get anxiety. Your, your hands might start shaking. You might feel a little nauseous. You start really getting mentally a little, little crazy. You say, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if this is good. Okay? So you're starting to worry, which means you're entering a fear state. And you're starting to get anxiety. And darn it, you know what happens <clears throat> to most people, 95% of the people that we've been talking about today, is that they come up with all the logical reasons I've already mentioned. They slam into that brick wall we call a terror barrier and go right back to bondage. See these arrows? They go right back to square one. They have great hopes. They have great dreams. They want better for their lives. They want to live their calling. They want a great income. They want to buy whatever they want to buy. They want the house or the boat or the cars, or maybe not even that. They, they just want a great retirement. They want to give more money to their partner and spouse and family overall. They want to live their calling. They want to live their purpose. They have a big vision for their life. They have all this stuff. Yet the anxiety conquers who they are and they go right back to bondage. Bottom left hand corner. They slammed against the terror barrier. And instead of going through the terror barrier, they say, I can't do this. They justify why they can't do it with a logical reason that makes sense. And they go right back to bondage. The crazy part about it is we've already talked about bondage causes more suffering and you start dying even more. Because most people, they say, I can't do it. I can't do it. They say, I'll do it in a month. They never do it in a month. They say, I'll do it next year. They never do it in a year. Haven't you heard those people before that have New Year's resolutions? Every year they wait. It's November, December. Why don't you get started now? No, no. The holidays are so busy. I got to spend money on the gifts. 
I got to spend money on hosting family and a party and everything. No, it's too busy for me. I'll start January 1st. And they get to January 1st. And they have every intention of having great resolutions and they write them down on a list. I'm going to release 50 pounds. I'm going to make an extra $20,000 a month. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Or they put them in I am statements. I am this. I am this. Seven days go by. It's January 8th, January 9th. They're trying. And then what happens? Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll start another week from now. I can't seem to, oh man, I'm procrastinating. I can't seem to get my habits going, right? It's always a false idea that you'll start in the future. Did you know every gym in the country, their greatest downfall for member statistics is they get a huge upswing in memberships in December around the holidays and people have every intention to go to the gym in January and they maybe do it one day, three days, two weeks, three, two and a half weeks and then you'll never see them in the, in the gym again. Why is this? What happens? Because it's a false idea that somewhere in the future is a better time than now. Even how logical it may sound of the idea you have, once I do get through the holidays, oh, my life will be so much easier. And then you get through the holidays and it's not because you attract something similar, okay? What's important is remembering feeling is your conscious awareness of the vibration you're in. Feeling equals vibration. So when you're uncomfortable, it just means you're going to a vibration you need to tap into to get to your dreams. That's all that's saying. So when I'm uncomfortable, it's not bad. It's good. It's telling you, hey, I'm uncomfortable. This is where I need to go to get to my dream. Here's the 5% of the population. And I want to recommend and suggest you're a part of that part of the population. No matter the, no matter the stuff going on, no matter if there's holidays coming up, no matter if your partner and spouse want you to do this thing or not, no matter if you're waiting to have the kids go to college, no matter if you're waiting for that job to come in that you've always wanted, no matter if you're waiting for the next paycheck, no matter if you're, you don't even know if you can make a payment for the thing you're about to invest in in 30 days, I don't care. Just forget about those reasons. The 5% do. And what do they do? They start in bondage like you did. They start in reason. They still get into conflict, the anxiety mode, and what you would do in this case, if you're actually a true freedom fighter, is you break right through that barrier, right there, that terror barrier, and you get to freedom on the other side, the right side. You become a bigger person, as you can see the diagram on the right. You become bigger. You expand your consciousness. And what starts to happen in the diagram here is you put a why idea in your conscious, a why idea in your subconscious, a why vibration in your body, and why results. New results, new thinking, new feelings, new actions, new vibration. This is what 5% of the population in the world do. And that's why they're extraordinary and they live a great life. The 95%, if you don't follow this, you're going to live a suffering life. The 5% who are great, why they live great is not out of luck. It's not a chance. They do the thing they fear. They do the thing that's uncomfortable and they went to the right side. Think of a time that you've done this in your life. We've all done it before. Remember the first time you drove a car? Maybe you were age 16 or 17 or 15, whatever age you were, whatever the legal age of driving was for you at your time. You were in bondage. You didn't know how to drive. Why idea? You start to say, I'm old enough to drive. I'd like to drive. First time you get in a car, there's a little bit of anxiety, just a little bit, even if you were very confident. You know, you say, oh, I drove go-karts and ATVs all my life. Great. But you get into the car, first time driving on a live road, 40, 50, 60 miles an hour or in your you know kilometers per hour if you're in those units in your country right you start you have a little bit of anxiety you, you have to be honest everyone has just a little bit right some have a lot but you did it anyways because you're like i really want to drive a car i want to go to the stores i want to go to i want to pick up my friends when i want to pick up my friends i want to go to the movie theater i want to go you know to drive to school drive to high school or go to a sports game or whatever it is you really wanted it, so you had your dreams bigger than your fears. And you got to freedom, now you can drive a car. Imagine you said the same thing, oh, I don't know if I can do it. Maybe I should try next week. Maybe I should try two years from now. 
you would be in bondage. You would never drive a car. How much of life would you be missing out if you weren't driving a vehicle or, or have the ability to all of your life? A significant chunk. So if you don't go to that side of freedom in the thing that you're going to take a calculated risk about, how much of life are you missing out? A chunk. Imagine if you, have you ever bought a house before or got your first apartment or your first townhouse or your first condo or whatever it is? Same idea. You were in bondage. You didn't have it. You started reasoning. I want to buy a house. I want to, I want to get a townhouse. I want to rent an apartment by myself and not live with my parents or whatever it is, right? There's some anxiety involved. I don't know the process. How do I do it? Or am I going to come up with the down payment? Or am I going to come up with the, you know, the payment to actually pay the monthly rent or pay the monthly mortgage? I'm unsure. There's some anxiety. There's worry. There's doubt. There's conflict within. But you did it anyways. And look at what happened. You got the house. You found the money for the down payment. You found the money for the mortgage payments or whatever it is. Right? Even if it's short-lived, you still did it and you experienced what that, what that was. Anybody who's ever started a business before, same idea. Anybody who's ever transitioned from a job before, same idea. Anybody who's ever started a job, day one of the job, are you that confident? No, you're not that confident yet, right? You do this process over and over and over, riding a bicycle as a kid without training wheels. You know, this same idea is the same idea for your dreams and your goals, income-wise, career-wise, whatever it is that you're looking to do. But if you keep going backwards, you're going to keep slamming that terror barrier and having your mind con you out of why you can't do something. And it's not true. It's a BS reason. The 5% of the population that you, 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 you look up to, you know, they're doing great. They have so much money in their bank accounts. They're flowing to the next level. They've done great things with their life. You're like, that's a really high achiever and they're not suffering day to day. It's because they're doing this. Very, very important and crucial. What's the opposite of being brave? Being cowardly, fearful, timid, and weak. If you're not doing this, you're those in the red. I know I'm being pretty blunt here. I understand that. But I want to be blunt here because I'm being blunt with myself as well. If I don't have the braveness, I don't have the courage to go through that terror bear, to go through the fear, I label myself as a coward, fearful, timid, and weak. That's what it is. That's the opposite of being brave. I know this might be triggering to you, but it's the truth. And we want to be truthful on these videos on my YouTube channel and different things because why would we fluff it up? Why would we tell you something otherwise? We want to tell you the exact truth of what's going on here. The people that are going through the terror bear into freedom, they're brave. They're courageous. They're looking to have the strength to move forward. They have the faith that I don't know if it's going to work out perfectly. I don't know that. But I know I need to do something differently and this is what I want to do. So if you're not willing to be this person, you're the cowardly, fearful, timid, and weak. Now, I know some people say, but Scott, I'll wait to do the thing in a month or a year when my situation improves. Once I get the news I need, once I have the money, I know in 30 days my schedule is going to be less. And two months from now, I'll have a better income because I'm getting a new job, etc. You know what this really is? Energetically, what's being said, subconsciously, Scott, I'll stay in my fears and allow them to control my destiny because I am projecting my logic into my dreams. And what it's saying with this is I am cowardly, fearful, timid, and weak. Now I know, again, it'll be like, well, Scott, you don't understand my situation. Believe me, I've had over 1,500 calls combined with different calls with non-clients and clients. And every single time, 100% of the time, somebody says, I'll wait to do the thing in a month or a year. The month or the year comes around to like, once, once I have my schedule freed up, I'll do it. Every time 100% of the data that we have is their situation is worse because what they thought was going to clear up, another thing happened. So for example, they said, once I get my tire fixed on my car, then I'll do the thing. A month goes by and they're like, oh man, the tires get to go now. Guess what happens? Transmission breaks. Ah, oh, you know, okay, I'll bring it back to the shop. Once I fix the transmission, then I'll do the thing. They get the car back, they're driving it. Two weeks later, you know what happens? Is the actual car itself breaks down on the road 
and they had to get it towed to the mechanic because of some of the belts in their in their engine needed to be completely redone. You see what goes on here? Or what about this? I'll wait to do it after Christmas or the holidays, right? And then Christmas holidays go by and they're like, okay, now I'm okay. Maybe I'll get started. Oh, but the new year, I, I have too much busyness going on with my job and business. I'll do it in February. You know what happens? They get to February, mid-February, and they're like, okay, well, maybe I'll do it in March. Well, no, I know I have a big Easter thing in April. I celebrate Easter, and I'll go do it then. So they're like, I'll wait until summer. Summer feels good. Summer feels like that's the time to do it. It'll be warm outside. It'll be great. I, I would like to do it then. It'll be refreshing. They get to summer, and they're like, well, no, you know, I'm actually feeling like slowing down. I've already, it's six months in the year already. I need to slow it down. I, I have so much going on right now with family and kids and my job and career. I also had to do these, I have these health challenges going on now. I got this thing going on with my knee. I got to get surgery on this. I got to do this. I have to wait. Let's circle back at the end of summer. And the summer comes along. They're like, well, I only have four months of the year left. Maybe I should be doing something. But again, I'm just recovering from a surgery and also I know it's starting to get, I need to finish the year, you know, with a lot of work, right? And I got the holidays coming up here. So maybe let's circle back towards the end of the holidays so that, you see what goes on here? It's an endless loop over and over and over. Their situation never was going to improve. They think that, logically, they think that. They think, they project outward. Oh, you know, uh, tomorrow, a week, a month, that's going to be better for me. But what they're really saying is, I'm going to stay in my fear and allow my actual life to be controlled by the fear. Their logic is controlled by their paradigm, by their programming. It's always later when I have enough money, later when I have the news, later when the kids are in college, after the holidays, once I win the lottery, I'll be happy. Once things improve, I can do this. Their logical reasons, they make sense to the mind. The mind is conning you out. That's not true. It's BS completely because the logic is controlled by your childhood wounds and programming. I don't say those things anymore. Sometimes I used to. But why don't I say those things? It's because I healed that part of me that hated uncertainty. So now I can move into the calculated risk a lot easier because I'm not in my own wound. I've changed my logic. I don't think the same as all my family has thought the same for many, many years. I don't want to be that black and white. I want to say what can be open. And so my family now is also saying, like, how can we be open to new things or what that looks like? Absolutely. And same thing for a lot of my clients. They're so open to possibilities. What options do I have rather than black and white? And the black and white actually comes from wounds. I fear that I'm not going to actually make it. So logic is not true. It's a voice inside your head that cons you out. It says things about your future so that you don't have anxiety. That's the only reason why it's saying it. So it'll say like, oh, I don't know if you can afford the payment. You know what that part of you is really saying? Please, please don't do this. I have too much anxiety and I want to control you not doing this. So don't do it. That's what your body is actually telling you. But the body is not correct. It just has so many wounds in the body that, of course, it needs to talk like that. We've all been there. I'll start tomorrow. Have you ever done something like, I'll do that tomorrow, and it never gets done? Or years go by, two years, five years, ten years, twenty years. What a shame. That amount of time, that huge significant part of life is now gone. And once it's gone, you're on your deathbed and it doesn't work out anymore. Right? That is your lens, and I get it. But how far has that gotten you up until this point? You would say, some people will say, well, that lens has protected me from some certain things not working out in my life. Sure. Right? Sometimes it has. But again, that's the part of the learning lessons. But how are those learning lessons actually being practiced now? Just by you not risking? You actually having the idea of like, well, I can't do it now. I always got to do it later. All the best entrepreneurs out there, whether it's a big name like Elon Musk or Bill Gates or some thought leader that you know for like a Tony Robbins or any other person, they don't have that lens. They never have. 
and that's why they got the success they did. Those people in their local neighborhood, those I know those people have more wealth than more people. They don't have that lens. Why don't you borrow my lens? Because borrowing my lens has gotten me to a level of success basically not being in that other lens. Timid and down and out, unsure of the self. I don't know if I believe in me. I don't know if I can do this, right? I don't know. I've had all these different things happen in my life. I don't know. These are just some examples of what have occurred from me actually going through the terror barrier every single month of my life. These are just some things. Having multiple houses around the country, having a condo in Miami Beach, that was our backyard in the bottom left-hand corner that's what we woke up to every day for a year, a couple of years, right? Being around big name people like Bob Proctor and Les Brown and becoming some of their top students, earning $120,000 in a single three-hour time period, curing an uncurable disease, having impact and pat all the different things, right? Being able to move life forward was only because I got used to going through this. That's the only reason why I was able to get there. So the same thing goes for you as well. Borrow this lens. Borrow the lens of moving life forward. If you're not going to borrow the lens, the one lens on the one side is worry and doubt, which creates fear in the subconscious, which creates anxiety, suppression, depression, disease on the bottom left-hand corner in your body. If you're worried and doubt, doubtful and concerned about your scenarios and circumstances, and that's why you're not taking the risk, it will lead to a disintegration of your body. Proven scientific fact. But if you have understanding and you think about your goals and desires, it creates faith and belief, and your body has well-being, expression, acceleration, and at ease. You start to create. So I don't care how many times you failed in the past, or how many programs in the past that you've taken. I've taken many programs. Over $600,000 worth of mentors, programs, retreats, etc. Did they all work for me? Yes. Why did they all work for me? Because I found a way to work them. There were some programs I bought for $10,000, paid in full. I never even logged in. Six months later, I remembered I bought it, logged in, got one idea, implemented it in my business, create an extra $200,000 within that year from one idea. It's the mindset. It's how you're thinking about it. People say, oh, that program didn't work for me. No, it's because you didn't work it. Sure, some programs are better built than others. Absolutely. I find some course that I'm like, man, a child wrote this. <laughs> this is terrible. Like, the, the, these modules are awful. Like, this is this absolutely BS. It's like, the, anybody could have created this, right? But I said, I'm going to find the mindset, where can a one idea come from this program that will help catapult my life forward? Got the one idea, transformed my life. And it was the worst course ever. It's how you're looking at the world that needs to change. It's how you're looking at your circumstances. You don't have to stay where you're at. <clears throat> you don't have to be the person you've always been. The warrior, the doubtful, the, the concerns, the safety one, any of that. You don't have to be that way. Find a way to say, no matter what, I'm going to make this work. I'm going to find a way to move this forward. I'm going to find a way to create a guarantee that this is going to work for me. I'm going to have the faith in this. So it's having the dream be bigger than the fear. Even if your past experience, you've never been able to do that. I don't care. Start fresh right now from this video. Nelson Mandela. I learned that courage was not was no, not, that should be not there, the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man or woman is not he or she who does not feel afraid, but he or she who conquers the fear. Conquering the fear, not letting the fear control what the logic looks like. This next slide may trigger you, but this may be the most important. Aim to fail fast. Aim to fail. Because you want to know what? Every person who's ever been great has failed hundreds of thousands of times. But they have tough skin. Tough skin. And they make it through it and find a better way. Those who don't, those who are the weak and timid and all of that, they try not to fail. Oh, I don't want this to fail. I don't want this to not work out. Because they have weak skin. They can't take it. They can't take it if they went through more emotional pain. They avoid it. 
They'd rather, and there's a great quote out there from a famous boxer. He said, I would rather go into the ring and get and beat terrible than to actually have emotional pain in my relationship and business and career. And what he was saying, and he said afterwards, is like, that's why I've had to grow on that area of my life. Most people in society, they don't care about physical pain. They have thick skin when it comes to that. But when it comes to emotional pain, they run to drugs, alcohol, addictions, playing safe, etc. I want you to start thriving off of emotional pain. Aim to fail fast. Get through the failures. Learn the lessons. Go to the next level. Your objective of life is not to try and not have things work out. Your objective of life is how fast can I learn lessons to create a better life? It's not going to just happen. It's going to take you shifting into a higher identity. Go through the fear or throw your goals and dreams into the trash. I mean that. You only have two choices. You go through the fear and become who you're born to be and change your vibration or you'll never get to the vibration you need to to actually accomplish your goals and dreams. So don't be frustrated by them anymore. Just throw them in the trash. There's no reason to have a goal, dream, desire, and vision if you're not willing to become the person you need to become to get there. Just throw them in the trash. Forget it. It's a waste of time. And why? Because you must shift into that frequency of your dream and goal to have it accomplished. That's by law. By law, scientific fact, if you're not willing to change who you are to get to the goal and, and dream, you won't get there. So throw your stuff in the trash because it's not worth it. You're just going to suffer every day. You're thinking about where you want to be, but not actually getting there. Remember this idea. Go through the freedom. Go through the terror barrier into freedom. Allow yourself to understand this concept, and you'll understand for life, every time you go through something positively uncomfortable, that's scary and exciting, you're about to enter a brand new lifestyle. It's called be, do, have for a reason. It's not have, do, be. So it's not like once I win the lottery, then I'll do the thing, then I'll be happy. <clears throat> it never works like that. Instead, I need to become who I was born to be in order to do the things I want to do, in order to have the things I want to have. Very important. And I'm sure you've heard the quote before that you have to be willing to do the things that people aren't willing to do to get the things that people wish they could have had. If you don't go through that freedom barrier, <clears throat> a terror barrier to into freedom, it's never going to work out. So be, do, have, be there. So what do you do from here? Remember those eight golden nuggets. Dreams over fears. That's what you need to create. First, write down all the times you took a risk and it worked out. Find evidence that positive risks are better than staying the same. Learn the lessons from the past mistakes. So all the times it didn't work out, Write down 10 lessons from the past that you've had and write down the mistakes and write down the lessons on things you're going to change so you don't repeat your past mistakes. Heal and let go of the past. Go back, forgive the people involved, forgive yourself. You did the best you could, just didn't work out. Create belief in yourself and motivation. Write down the times you have succeeded. What are your motivations to do this? Are you trying to do this for your family, for your kids, for your legacy, for your freedom? Why do you actually want to get to the next level? And write those things down as well. Get a mentor and accountability. Let the mentor and teacher listen to them no matter what. Just listen to them and do what they say. That's what I did with Bob Proctor. I didn't always agree with what he said. I didn't always want to do the things he said, but I'm just going to do them anyways because he knows better than me. He has better results. Why would I not listen, right? And every time I did, it brought me to the next level. So let them stretch you, bring you to a higher frequency. Go through the anxiety. Allow the anxiety to tremble within you and do it anyways. So have the anxiety going and go through the terror barrier. It only lasts about 24 hours. The first time I got mentoring, okay, it was a $22,000 package. And I had no money. <clears throat> I literally didn't even have money for rent at the end of the month. I had to come up with a $4,500 down payment. They didn't have financing or anything like that. So in order for me to get this mentorship, which I knew I needed no matter what, I borrowed the money 
sold my own car to get in. And I remember once I paid, my body was trembling, my hands were shaking. And for the next 24 hours, I felt nauseous. I almost physically threw up in the bathroom multiple times. True story. But what happened afterwards is I took such a jump in frequency that in 60 days, I went from zero to earning 10,000 a month with no experience and never looked back. That created that single jump created a hundred thousand dollars in 12 months with zero experience being a very young individual, never done marketing, entrepreneur work, any of it in, in a real world setting, in a, in a volume my setting. And then catapulted me up to a quarter million, half million in the year, earning six figures in a single day and well beyond over and over all these amazing things unfolded from that one thing. So I just did it anyways. It was risky. I didn't know if I was going to be able to pay for groceries. I didn't know if I was going to be able to pay for running and get kicked out. I didn't know, but my dreams were bigger than my fears. I didn't know. Nobody knows, but you got to have something bigger. It says, I got to do this. I don't want to live this suffering life anymore. It's not fun. Got to have the motivation to do it and go through it anyways. Get scared and excited. Those are the two emotions. It's the key. I was so scared and so excited for the moment I did that deposit down payment to get into that mentorship. Every client I've ever worked with, those are their things as well, scared and excited. Every great person who's ever done anything great, they're scared and excited. That's the key. If you're scared and excited, go do the thing. If you're scared and not excited at all, then don't do it. If you're excited, but you're not scared, it's not going to have growth. So if you're a little excited, a little scared, great, move forward. If you're really excited, really scared, great, move forward. And watch videos on risk-taking successful people. Who do you admire? Every great person, every single great person has went through the fear. Every single one of them. Dreams bigger than fears. Move your life forward. Go and do the thing, watch the gold and greatness that follows. I want to see you succeed in a greater way. Go do the thing that you're fearing. Go do it. Push the button. Do the thing, whatever it is. Why not you and why not now? When else are you going to do it? Oh, and then when I say that, your, your logical thoughts are going to come back, right? Remember, those are complete BS. Go do the thing you need to do now. There's no better time than right now. It's synchronicity that you already are aligned with the thing or else if, if God, universe, divine substance wanted you to do it later, you wouldn't have known about it until that time. You're not bigger than God and universe, are you? No. You lined up with the thing when you did because that's when you were born to do it. God, universe, higher substance aligned you with it as you aligned with it and it was there. If the universe said, oh no, it's going to be a year from now or whatever that looks like, you would have attracted it in a year from now. Don't be bigger than God in the universe. Co-create with God in the universe, higher substance. And realize what came into your life is here for a reason. It's here now for a reason. And go and do that thing. This is Guy Hawk signing off here. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed this video. And if you did, please throw a like and subscribe to the channel as we send out other high valuable content like this. I know this video is almost an hour long, about 50 minutes, right? If you find this content valuable, let me know. And in the comments box, tell me what you're going to go do. Tell me the thing you're going to go do that's going to go through the fear and onward to the other side. Tell me what you're going to do to follow the greatness that's within you and accept the calling, accept the divine timing, the synchronicity of you moving your life forward. Tell me about it in the comment box. I want to know and I want to keep you accountable. I want to stretch you to that next level. Now let's move this thing forward. I look forward to seeing the greatness, the gold, and wonderfulness that comes forward into your life after following this video and content.